beside her I am the better man When I look to leave her Graham Aubrey is one of cycling's immortals. He revolutionised the sport twice and won four world titles on a homemade bike. When I climbed down to be set free She took me in again There's a bee There's probably people out there that are as talented or more talented than me who haven't achieved as much because they don't, don't either have the ability or they're not willing to push themselves that hard consistently and then really destroy themselves and invent themselves. I mean, Greymont solely changed the, the face of cycling, totally solely changed the face of cycling from his, from his tuck position to the, the Superman position to the UCI having the problems with with that and then now to the standard parameters what a bike is and it's laid down now to be the, the, the rider but Graham without a doubt changed the full history of cycling or track cycling anyway he changed the full, the full history of it That's quite a claim Sandy uh, I, But it's true It's a fact He did do that you know. He devised a new way of riding bikes and he invented if, uh, a number of radical changes to the basic bicycle, which were different from anybody else's in the world at the time. Now that puts you in a position where you've only got two alternatives. Graham describes this as success or emotional death and self-destruction, and that's not far off the, off the point. That's not, that's not a long way away. If you are going to enter a professional sport as an amateur and do it in a way which has no history and which is not approved, you've either got to do it awfully well or you're going to look a complete clown. Graham proved with the rides that he turned out that he was a great athlete. It took a while for people to cotton on, to really uh, appreciate that, but when he took the hour record, uh, that was it. In, in, in most people's minds, they, this, this man was, well, he's, he's in there amongst the, the great, he's on the list. Well, the velodrome was almost empty. There was 89 people, including the team and the janitor, witnessed that our record was as our record had been beaten. And it was almost empty, a huge velodrome, and you could hear everything rattling about. But you had the helmet on, the wind's whistling round. Now all your senses just die away as the time goes on and on and on. And it seems, doesn't seem like an hour, it seems like it's like time slows down to this painfully slow lap after lap. And what you see at the start is this board saying like 200 and something laps. And it goes down 200 and something, one less, and 200 and something, one less than that. And time just slows down and down. And this terribly painful rack, like it just doesn't stop. There's no ease up at all, any kind. It's like just constantly on this rack. It gradually gets pain more and more and more painful. It's like riding up a road that's gradually become more and more and more inclined. And at the end up, it has to be subconsciously, you're willing to die to get this, but you can't actually think I'm going to do this this hard. I got the British Air record, I needed more. Then I had to go to world level. And then I got to world level, the hour record, then I needed more. I needed the Pursuit Championship. And then I beat Chris Boardman in the semi-final, and then I needed this gold medal. And I needed it just for emotional survival. During the countless hours of Olympic preparation, Graham Obrey has concentrated on one thing only. My attitude is, I've got to go in for the gold medal. Because as soon as you start thinking, well, the silver medal would be okay, or a medal would be okay, then when you're thrashing down, it's hard to express how difficult, how hard the pursuit event is. While Obrey was building his reputation in Scotland, Chris Boardman was on his way to the top, south of the border. Their rivalry was to become one of the fiercest in the sport. In 1993, Boardman was the Olympic champion on the high-tech bike, Obrey the Scottish maverick on a bike made from washing machine parts. Obrey was the quicker. Even on my best game, he could beat me. And he was the only person in the country that was the case, really, at that time. And he was the one who pushed me hard to actually get better. In fact, I would have probably stagnated had he not been around. He revolutionised the world of pursuit cycling twice. He forced people to change positions to try something that they, they'd never even considered before because they were blinkered as to what a cyclist looked like. 
So in, in that sense, he was very much revolutionary. Oh, Anne's an absolute rock. Um, I mean, goodness knows what would have happened if she wasn't there. Um, seeing how I really was. Like, and, and she's taking it well, you know, it's, it, it needs this psychological input and it, it got a chance to change. And um, So we do deeply love each other. Um, and she stood by me through the thick and thin, really. Anne and Graham married in 1989. Their relationships endured all of his mood swings. There was bits of it all, all through our married life, but at the time I just thought, well, I always thought it was because he was an athlete, you couldn't handle alcohol. I didn't realise that what was happening was when his mood dipped, then he would drink. But it really came to a head really in 1996, really after the Olympics. The need for success has taken its toll. Aubrey's tried to kill himself three times and is a manic depressive. She has been through an awful lot. In terms of um, me trying to cope with not even knowing what's wrong with me, I was kind of suspected when I was younger that you know there's something wrong with me. I can't feel this bad. It's like you know it's a sunny day and stuff. At logic, it's a sunny day, and about and everything's fine. How can I feel this bad? Well, I would say the fact that he actually eventually admitted that he had a mental health problem to me that was a big achievement to actually admit that you're unwell and to go for treatment and to continue to take the treatment and to actually continue to improve yourself and work on improving yourself so that your mental health is improving and therefore staying well, staying alive and staying obviously with his family and his, his wife. And I think that to me is the best achievement he can do for me is just to stay here, to stay in this earth and stay well and function as a person and the fact that he has two happy children and he's a brilliant father. That to me, if he did nothing else but made two children happy, that to me would be a big enough achievement. <laughs> History will, will view him with a certain amount of awe uh, and a certain amount of sympathy. His ability, Graham's ability to suffer and to turn himself inside out, it was, I've never seen him to like it at all. Happy, um, I've got two wonderful kids, wonderful wife. He's got two children that love him, uh, he's got a wife that loves him, and he could have been a world champion and not with us. But the fact that he's managing to stay alive and stay with us is his biggest achievement. Be